Okay, so on with the lesson. Um, you've already heard my testimony, probably. So I cut it off because there was an interruption. So if you want to see the testimony that I had for this morning about um, my student passing her NCLEX, yay! Um, you can look at that video. So now let's start with our lesson. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us this day. Please bless us, help us to learn something in this lesson that we can apply to our lives we access in Jesus name amen okay so today is Wednesday and we are studying lesson number 10 right the memory text is as or the title is the wrath of Elihu and the memory text is as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts and that's found in Isaiah 55 verse 9 so we are looking at Wednesday's lesson and Wednesday's title is how to practical lessons from Elihu Elihu I don't know how to say it sorry okay there are two lessons Elihu can teach us listen carefully before responding even if you disagree with the person who's talking. So Elihu started talking only when everyone else had nothing to say. So who is Elihu? Elihu is one of Job's friends. So let's let's look at that. So Job 32 um, verses 11. I waited while you spoke. I listened to your reasoning while you were searching for words. Right? And 37.5 says, God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. So Elihu started talking only when everyone else had nothing to say. He was not shy and his words made quite an impact. That he was concerned about Job is evident in Job 36.2. Bear with me a little longer, and I will show you that there is more to be said in God's behalf. So I really like that. Okay, so how many times, and I, I'm guilty of this too, how many times and how many people, and how many friends do you have where a person is talking, it might be you, and the person talks over you, right? I've been guilty of that. And that's like the rudest thing. And you know, one of the things that I do every once in a while is I go over my rules of etiquette. Like I have books that I read. And so one of the worst things to do is to talk over people while they're talking. It is so rude. And so we should not do that, especially when the person is in, you know, trials and tribulations, problems and have issues and they want to vent, they want to talk. You want to listen, right? And even if you don't like what the person is saying, that's what it says. Even if you don't like what the person is saying, you should give them the benefit of the doubt that there is something important in what they want to put out there, right? Because the thing is, even if you're not in agreement, how would you know what you're not in agreement with if you're not listening? So pay attention to what people have to say. Listen to everything they have to say because you will have a better argument that way, right? You don't only need to speak your mind you need to rebuttal you need to be able to hear what they have to say and give an argument against what they're saying if you don't agree or if you do agree use examples from what they said to show how much you do agree but if you're not listening how are you going to do either one right you can't have a strong argument if you don't know what your opponent is trying to say okay so Elihu started talking only when, oh, so we said that, right? Um, I once worked with a man who talked, told me, Heather, when I realize that my ability to listen, what my re ability to listen gives me, I made it a priority to truly listen. I also wanted to notice people's reactions and I wanted to understand the true reasoning behind everything they say to me. I want people to see that I am really listening to them and that I am interested in them. There are three main mistakes people do when they talk. First, they talk before what they have to say is needed. Second, they are too shy to say something that should be said. And third, they talk without paying attention to the reaction of their listeners. So, um, that first one, talking before what it says 
talk before what they have to say is needed. So it's not every time that people need your advice. Like people don't always care about what you need to say, right? And so I tend to try to keep my peace, right? So like if they don't ask for advice, don't give, don't offer, right? Some people like to stay in whatever they're in, right? They they want to tell you what issues they have, but they're not looking for your help. They just want to vent. They just want to talk. So you need to be able to decipher when to offer an advice and when to hold your peace. And then the second one says, they might be too shy to say something that should be said. So if you are afraid of people, of what their opinions might be of you, of what they'll think about you, then, you know, or even of harming a person's, you know, image or um, harming their feelings or hurting their feelings, then there's a lot of things that you might know you need to say, you won't. I particularly, I care about people's feelings, but not when it, it's against the truth or the what's right. Um, but then obviously it's re if I really care for you and I love you, then I would share. But sometimes it's like, I'm like, well, you know, you didn't ask, I'm not going to share, right? So I do have that tendency to also consider how much I care for you, right? Do I care if you're upset with me or not, right? Um, do I care if I step out of boundaries or not, like your, what your reaction is going to be? And I'm not a fraidy cat, right? I'm not, I don't tend to be. I used to be, I used to be so afraid of people and what they say, but now, you know, the bolder you get, the more confidence you have in whom you are and what you are, then you're more able to express yourself and not doubt yourself. You know, the reason why you're afraid is because you don't think what you have to say is important, right? The more self-esteem you build, the more you're able to be um, you're able to ver verbalize your opinion and be confident that it's important, right? And the last one, and uh, third, they said, talk without paying attention to the reaction of the listener. I do that like all the time. Like I am a public speaker, so I pay attention when I'm on the pulpit. And you know, and I find, I don't know if you know this, but as you're talking, you can sense if you're being paid attention to, if you're boring your speak your listener, or like if they're interested. And when I'm on the pulpit, like or talking in some genre where there's like a population of people in front of me, I can sense that. I can sense when they're interested, when they're like, you know, waiting for each word. I can sense when I've lost their attention. Um, I, you can sense those kind of things. So the person who cannot they're not very good at public speaking because at some point people are going to stop listening and if you do sense it and you don't care you're still not good at public speaking because then how do you not care if people are listening to what you're saying or not sometimes we like the sound of our own voices then what advice that we can offer right we like to hear ourselves talk and i'm not gonna lie sometimes i like to hear myself talk too because i'm like oh you know like um i speak well i've always been told this or whatever so i like the sound of my voice but then it's not really about speaking well it's a, it's not about you know exhibition it's about communication are you getting across what you want to get across you know and you know if you know me you know i'm very honest and i'll tell you the truth about me and in, and about you right and the truth is yeah sometimes we've written a speech and it sounds great and we're loving it so then we're like i want to say this you want to continue and talk and you know but it's really not about you when you're talking to people especially when they're in need it's not about what you're saying it's about what they're hearing right because you can say the best of things but if they're not receiving it then what's the point of you talking right so be careful that while you're communicating with someone, especially someone who needs your advice, that you're paying attention to how they're receiving it. Because maybe you have to say it some, some way, another way, you know, um, differently. Maybe you have to use different examples, right? You have to see, notice these um, silent, you know, their attitude, uh, um, nonverbal communication. You have to be able to do that if you're going to be a good communicator, right? Focus more on God. As we read the book of Job, we notice that his friends were telling him 
that everything was his fault and that he should be therefore search for his heart to see what he has done wrong. When we are wrong or in a bad situation, the last thing we want to hear is someone rebuking us. It only makes us more miserable. Elihu, however, decided to focus on God. Far be it from God to do evil. It is unthinkable that God would do wrong, that the Almighty will pervert justice. That's found in Job 34, 10, 12. He does not take his eyes off the righteous. He enthrones them with kings and exalts them forever. Our God is a loving God. How great is God? Beyond our understanding, the number of his years is past finding out. That's in, found in Job 36, 26. Yes, we will make mistakes. Our people, other people will hurt us and accidents will happen. So what are we to do? Let us focus on God. Okay, so... My aunt and I, we have it out all the time. And the reason we have it out is, let's say I've done something wrong. And at the time that I've done it wrong, that's when, you know, she would berate me. And that's not, I talk about my aunt because that's my experience, but that's everyone, right? And I do that to her and I do that to other people too. But then what I always tell her when I have this argument is, if I'm a Christian and I know what's right and wrong, then I already know when I've done something wrong. I don't need you to tell me that I did something wrong. I need you to tell me, but I don't need you to dwell on it, to get, it's like, for example, I have a cut, right? I know there's a cut there. And as a nurse, when, when a, a student, a patient comes with a wound, I'm gentle how I treat it. I will start around, clear off the blood. If it's not gushing, obviously. If it's gushing, I will apply some pressure directly, right? But if it's not profusely bleeding, then I will clean around it, right? Get to where the cut is, dab, tenderly clean it, then bandage. What is my point? The point is, when a person has a cut, it's bleeding, it hurts. They know that cut is there. I know I've sinned. You know you've sinned. You don't need someone to be like, you know you did this right. You know you shouldn't have right. Why would you write? Why da -da -da? You don't need that. You need someone to be understanding and to say to you, you know, you know this is wrong. Once. How are we going to fix this? How could you have done differently? How does God, how can God help you? How can I help you? We are so much in telling the person how wrong they are that we forget to console them in their problem, right? Because as I said, if you're a Christian, you know when you do something wrong and it hurts. Because first of all, you're like, how can I do this? Then you're like, you know, how did I get here? And then you're like, I've hurt my God, I've hurt myself, I disappointed myself, I disappointed my God, I disappointed my folks, right? You're already there yourself because God wrote the laws in your heart. So you know everything other people are saying, you've already said it to yourself. Whether you stood in the mirror and be like, dang girl, what's wrong with you? Like, what are you, or you're in your room, or you're crying, right? So when other people come and they tell you these things, it's it's not really helpful sometimes, right? And then some people, they're like, they you know, they go on for hours. Like parents tend to do that. Like you do something wrong, they start talking at three o'clock, nine o'clock at night, and they're still talking about the same thing. Really? Do I need all of that? Do we do? Like I'm already suffering as it is on my own. And the funny thing is, some people feel like your pains hurt them more than it hurts you. How is that possible? How does my doing something wrong hurt you more than it hurts me? All because I did it doesn't mean I didn't care, right? It's just because, you know, let's say you're weak, you know, the devil made you do something, whatever, right? So.